Hi guys, welcome to another online lecture for the Chem Complete series. And today we are going to be wrapping up the ether epoxide chapter. And the final major lesson we're going to talk about here is base opening of epoxides. So if you need a refresher, the lesson before this taught us how to make epoxides and the process of using peroxy acids to form epoxides. I'd encourage you to go check that out if you need a refresher on that. And we also talked about the acidic opening of epoxides. So I'm going to jump right into it. A base opening, when we deal with epoxides, I'm going to draw the same two epoxide examples that we had in the acidic opening video. So this case right here, where I'm dealing with a primary and a secondary position, and then we're going to do a more hindered position, where I end up with an epoxide in approximately the same position but here we're gonna add this CH3 group behind right so these are the two options that I have or the two starting materials I should say when we do a base opening we're gonna use a base instead of an acid so we're no longer using HBr or uh, HI or anything like that now we're going to use some sort of a base. So for instance, I'm going to pick out a base. Um, let's keep it consistent both times. We could use um, sodium hydroxide. So sodium hydroxide is going to produce O. Uh, actually, you know what? In, in uh, keeping track with ethers, let's do an alkoxide. So we'll do OCH3 minus, right? So a nice alkoxide ion. And I'll do the same thing down here. I've got minus O CH3 and so just note that most of the time when you see this in textbooks or something else it's going to be written as NaOCH3 and the reason for that is that you normally don't just have anions that are sitting around if I want to use this compound it's going to be stabilized as a salt so I've ha I have the sodium or something like that so what this really comes out to is sodium Na Okay, and then O, CH3 minus. Uh, one other note, a lot of times books will start going like this, O, M, E, or you might see O, E, T. This is simply a, a lazy man's way of abbreviating methyl, ethyl, right? Instead of writing out CH2, CH3, they just write E, T to represent ethyl. You're going to see that a lot in organic chemistry too in the second semester, uh, particularly the further in you go. As we start doing these reactions, the co more complicated ones, you're going to start seeing uh, ME and ET abbreviated. So anyway, back to the epoxide openings here. When we have a situation like this, okay, we have negatively charged nucleophiles. These are very strong nucleophiles. And so what we end up with is straight SN2 type of behavior when we get these cleavages. And so the SN1 was potentially present when we were dealing with the acid formula, but once we deal with the base formula, we're following strict SN2 procedures, and so that actually takes a little bit of the guesswork out. I'm always going to go in to the less hindered position when I'm attacking here. So I've got this here, okay? Now, one of the things that should be noted is that when I break this epoxide open, when I do the acidic form, the epoxide is normally protonated. So when I get the alcohol, the alcohol is already set. It's protonated. Here, I'm just going to have O- minus in this case that's going to break open here, kind of like towards the tail end of a Grignard reaction. I'm going to have to figure out how to deal with that. And so then I also have OCH3 that came in and attacked the less hindered site, the less hindered position. So what I need to do is I need to wrap this up with H2O or you could say an acid, H3O plus, you'll see either or used. So this really should be step one, use the base. Step two, use some sort of acid or water. And I want to bring up a point here because a lot of students forget to number this stuff when you say one and two. When I say step one, add sodium methoxide, step two, add H3O plus or water, right? What I'm telling you is that these have to be added separately. This is a base 
and this is an acid and this is a very important point if I put a base and an acid together they're gonna neutralize one another this is gonna undergo its own reaction these cannot be placed in at the same time and so I have to use these numbers when I'm separating this I'm stating to the user look do this let it run to completion and only then do I bring in acid in the second step because this is a base opening of the epoxide right so anyway I, I add the methoxy and then this second step what's essentially gonna happen here is the oxygen that's gonna form the alcohol is gonna grab a proton whether it's from water or H3O plus and I end up with the alcohol so then I've got my OH and I also have my OCH3 here okay now here's the difference when I come down here and I'll still number this one and then two again you can use H3O plus and H2O interchangeably here um, I would even argue maybe a little bit more towards H2O to keep things in a more basic type condition so when I uh, in working with this here this OCH3 instead of attacking this more substitute position because I only favor SN2 with the base opening this is gonna come here and attack at this secondary site versus the tertiary which will split this open so this is a little different than what we saw with the acid opening right so what I end up with in this case is alright up here I've got my O minus I do still have my CH3 in back don't forget that that's there okay and then in the area that I attacked I've got my OCH3 here so at this point I would then again subject this to the acid and I would end up with the final product and so that's really it it's kind of short in comparison to the acid cleavage but that's because the rules are a little bit simpler and the rules basically state you always undergo the SN2 that you don't need to sit and differentiate whether in one time I'm gonna get SN2 the next time I'm gonna get uh, SN1 you're always going for SN2 here which means the less hindered position so here right I attacked the less hindered position that's where my nucleophile ended up the methoxide and here this position right here is less hindered in comparison to this tertiary position right there and so anytime that I'm doing this I attack the less hindered position for a base opening epoxide um, I hope you guys found this helpful that's really all that I need to say about this most of the the complicated part was with the acid opening um, one other thing that I would mention there's lots of potential bases so minus OCH3 and minus OH are only two potential options so we have seen hydrides minus H so a lot of times you'll see something like sodium hydride all right Grignards so CH3 CH2 MGBR right these are good nucleophiles that have attacked carbonyl groups this CH2 portion could absolutely open an epoxide anything that's going to be a good base or nucleophile and we tend to use those terms interchangeably sometimes uh, you got to be careful if you're talking E2 versus SN2 but all these are going to make excellent versions of nucleophiles uh, minus sulfur right so if I have uh, minus SCH3 or maybe I have minus SH um, any of those types of things would make excellent options as nucleophiles when I want to do a base opening of an epoxide ring. So hopefully this helped. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Um, I'd like your feedback. If you found that this video was helpful and you want to support the channel, uh, just liking the video and subscribing so that you get all the latest updates would greatly help me. And other than that, uh, that wraps up the ether and epoxide chapter. So thank you guys for spending time with me and supporting me. I will see you guys for the next video where we will start tackling NMR and NMR techniques along with spectroscopy. So thanks a lot, and I will see you guys there.